After all these years, they just brought back the villainous. Dr. Stone fans, I may not be the first to do this, but I would like to officially welcome you to the home stretch. It's your main man, Master Cell, leader of the Master Knights of the Round Table of Company 1. Subscribe to this bit move. And Dr. Stone Season 3 has officially completed. However, if you wasn't on social media yesterday, then you were definitely informed now that we are indeed entering Season 4, the final season. Yeah, it did one of those things where it kind of announced the final season was always in production yesterday. Kind of like <laughs> Shy did. The thing is, at this point, we, we, we really saw it coming. They kind of pretty much confirmed, more or less, <laughs> how things was going to go like two weeks ago. And this episode, indeed, being kind of a resolutionary kind of thing, didn't really happen, actually. Because I think, at this point, I can actually say, when it comes to setting up the next season, Dr. Stone does a good job of trying to hype up that next season with his final episode, rather than just resolving the conflict. More or less, resolving the conflict the episode beforehand. I just realized, even though I've been covering Dr. Stone this through the entirety, I had to do it on and off based on circumstances, and season 3 is actually the only season so far where I actually reviewed every episode. Let's just say we're doing better. But if I'm right and last week was the resolution of this season, then today's episode what set up us for the next season more still than anything was indeed the revival of the once ruler of the kingdom of might, Takasa. Not to be confused with Tabasa, this ain't Monogatari, I know you're watching Jane. Takasa was indeed revived this episode. I ain't gotta be real with y'all, they kinda made it seem like it was gonna be kind of a gamble thanks to the whole thing with the, apparently the pencil break casing device, the Medusa, running quote unquote out of batteries. Now what Spinsicu said here definitely did, did make sense, I mean, not necessarily batteries, but you know, I just realized something. You know, I have a lot of prints of shows that I've covered this career I've had on YouTube. However, I don't have a Dr. Stone print. That's definitely some of the things. I got a Golden Comedy print. They have four seasons, but Dr. Stone's about the AI. You know, every time you leave my property, you gotta look at me, right? Don't mean to go off topic there, but I think I might need to write that wrong. You know what I'm saying? I did review in three seasons and guaranteed to review a fourth one ending off this whole thing. I think Dr. Stone deserves to be in this house. Back on topic, my bad, yo. Yes, we revived Takasa. And the way they went about it, it's weird to call this anti but I can't think of another word for it at the time. You know, his sister was real big about bringing him back, as she should be, and was trying to hold the purification of Medusa right towards his chest. Then here comes Taiju being over dramatic, as he always is, <laughs> trying to press it close to him as well. Here comes goddamn Kohaku, <laughs> misinterpreting the whole situation, trying to push it towards him as well, as if it's actually making a difference in how the Medusa works. Then here comes Gin, being <laughs> minimal as that he is, Using factual evidence to promote nonsense. This man said, if you take the batteries out of something and put it back in, maybe you give it a little juice one time to bring things back. Which is true. This, how does that apply here? They're pushing the producer closer to God's to God, so making sure it works better. It's like, you want to say one second, one meter. That's pushing it closer to him is not going to change the fact that one meter is a large space. Especially if it's already touching the motherfucker. Then Sinku gets involved, at least having a reason saying like, hey, if he does get slightly petrified here, at least it will revive his own cracks on his pitch. And without an explanation whatsoever, Chrome also gets involved. I get just wanted to be part of the group, right? But everybody in the room kind of doing the same thing. That means somebody else gets to eventually come back out and revive everybody in case this goes worse. It was indeed a wholesome moment, but the factual undertones and the show based on science kind of just had me like, what are we doing again? <laughs> But to be fair, when they did the one meter one second, while it did hit Takasa as it would anyways because he's touching him, it definitely did not go far enough to hit everybody else. So I guess at the end of the day, I guess, yeah. It, at least nobody was at harm anyways the way it was going. Master Cell shut the fuck up, right? Tuku quickly put the revival flu on Takasa, and basically, yeah. The speed petrified brought him back to the injury that Yoga put on him. Kyoga, who we haven't seen since he fought Boss. And we revived the once ruler of the King of the Might. The only reason he's not the ruler of King of the Might anymore because the King of the Might is gone. What a slip of trade, though. Yo! I don't care what anybody says. You're gonna attack my sister? That's betrayal. Fuck you. Matter of fact, speaking of statues that get destroyed prematurely, Kyoga got petrified with everybody else on the island when Ipera did his thing. Takasa hate bringing that fucker back. <laughs> Instead of visiting the past, let's get on to the future. Takasa, the first thing he got up, first thing he did was greet his little sister who was crying and seeing him. You guys know I'm bad with names. The girl with the camera, right? 
She was letting them have the moment, even though she, obviously she loves Akasa, she wanted to be part of it, but she was trying to let the sister have a moment, but Ruby was trying to push her in there with the strength of her gorilla sister. God damn again. My bad, it was Chrome that said that, actually. <laughs> actually, not a thing, but again, actually has not done that. It has primarily been Siku and Chrome. One again is supposed to be the smart one. I mean, I'm gonna get brownie points with her sister if you call her a gorilla. What kind of awkward ass proposal is that? I love you, but your sister was kind of, uh. But yes, Camera Lady did indeed get to get, have a brief moment with Takasa as well before Takasa got right back into work mode. Because, kind of like, uh, they tried to say, like, this is always how Takasa is, but it kind of goes like this in Dr. Stone, which is technically Senku's fault. Yes, we was brought back. Yes, we're here. However, fuck all the mushy stuff. We got shit to do, and obviously you need me for that shit to do, or you would have brought me back anyways. Senku told Takasa that we're going to attack the moon. I think his reaction here is probably the most genuine you can have. Hell, oh, you're gonna attack the moon. Wait for real? And even at that moment, you know Siku was absolutely serious, but it's kind of like, I, I, I like how it was put here, as Sakasa is from the modern world, going to the moon out of nowhere. It's one of those things where the people in the star world have no idea less than people in the modern world how to get that done. But because people in the modern world had some kind of idea how people try to do that, how in the fuck? But because this is Dr. Stone and Takasa being very much well aware of that, aka aware of Senku, it doesn't take long for him to be like, you know what, if we're going to, you say we're going to the moon, we're going to the goddamn moon. Give her a hammer that moment he was trying to pick at <laughs> Senku and Takasa talking about trying to excuse the mission still trying to say like, hey, that's what means I brought your ass back. Otherwise, I wouldn't have done it. Gimro is halfway correct here, and I'll say that much. It was indeed a race against time when it came to reviving Takasa, and the whole petrification thing, saving people from their mortal in injuries, was indeed technically proved by Genro, so yeah. However, there was one huge thing that Genro was wrong about, his disciple running up against Takasa, and Takasa immediately destroying that motherfucker. His level just went to 100 to 0, goddamn Genro. Despite Takasa being like, if this guy knew modern martial arts, he would have been much more of a threat and probably could actually beat him. Takasa is indeed, while he dons that cape we know him to have, <laughs> he is the strongest guy right now. But Takasa vs. Mines will be an interesting battle. We have to remember that Hyoga was under this guy. While Hyoga was not as strong as Mines, a guy a step above Hyoga vs. a guy who's a step above Hyoga. Mines vs. Takasa, take your pick. All I'm saying is I'm going with the man who got stripes right now. I mean, it took season 3 off, but he came in episode 3, goddammit. Because I tried to say that this guy was a better contender to go with them to the moon than him because he tried to take down the kingdom of science one time but he also destroyed statues. Yeah, the Sinku don't care. War paint. Fall oh boy. Put on your war paint! I could do better than that, but I'm not going to. The war paint thing, honestly, here actually kind of reminds me of goddamn Yu Gi Oh! 5Ds. Especially Giz doing it, how he had it underneath the eye, kind of putting that. Wow. If I'm anime eyes, you do that in real life, it's actually kind of terrifying. But it was indeed a moment, and him putting on that war paint, very, <laughs> almost like he didn't really care. He kind of just splashed it across his face, even though it did kind of make lines, it's kind of like, really? It was true indeed that moment where Tagasa has joined the Kingdom of Science. He has been officially acquired, which you cannot argue has been a long ass time coming. Even back in season two, when we thought we had to straight up beat this guy. There was a time back in the day when the only course of action was to take this nigga out. And now, look at this, nigga, I don't care what y'all call it. That's growth. This video is getting long, but the rest of the episode pretty much as I said it would, makes it us setting up to be able to go across the rest of the world to get what we need necessary to go to the moon. Which apparently is alcohol. Me drinking before work has become a bad habit. But Siku, you're the one who said it. Siku basically needs to go to America. He's not going to America for alcohol even though domestic is better. He's going for corn. I actually do not have corn in his house right now. I'm doing the best I can. Like I said, this video is getting long. I'm actually sure I'm recording time right now. Yeah, I need to clear up this phone. I have to kind of just look over the most dapper old man ever. And usually he had making that big ass globe. And, uh, it's one of those moments where I kind of look at Dr. Snow and still be like, really? Even if you had all day, y'all did that in a day. Just because you felt challenged. Anybody think usually he has looking a little bit more buff these days? This girl came out here with some broad shoulders. Girl, you been lifting? 
We didn't have a huge ass recruitment session here, so I'm actually not 100% sure who's coming with us and who's not. But I'm sure you see here he is. He was freaking Tsukasa coming. I mean, day one's at this point, right? It kind of hurt me to see Rui not go. I ain't gonna lie. Like, I mean, I really wanted her to go, even in that for Crohn's sake, Kaku's, I mean, somebody. The deal with Kurosawa because Tsukasa involved. I mean, just going with the same crew we already had in season three. Switch it up some, right? As in, leave Maga out of there. Magma don't need to come. That time where they tried to talk to Ryuzi about Takasa. Anybody notice Ryuzi's hand is kind of turning blue again? Then when he was revived the second time, that blue left, but now it's coming back. Maybe we already got war paint on, but does he do that intentionally? Remember, Ryuzi does not want to use Drago, his form of currency, or money at all to control people. That's not his motive. This man, at the very least, bisexual as hell, went all the man and all the woman. Equally, slut. Kasa down below overheard this and was just like, all right. But yes, next stop is America. Dr. Stone knows his audience. To be fair, we got NASA, bitch. I don't know anything about that for real. <laughs> and the voyage has started to season four. Once again, the final season. I'm not gonna bullshit you and saying that after watching the first few episodes of season one of Dr. Stone, I would have told you that we would have been on our way to the goddamn moon. But here we are, goddammit. Stronger than we have ever been. Going up against the white man, aka the threat that has caused all this shit in the first place. In hindsight, we should have seen this coming, huh? Dr. Stone really just took three seasons to tell us what's up. Sorry, but that's alright. That's the feeling I got at the end of this. We're going to the moon to fight the guy who, stuck, who petrified the earth in the first place. No shit. God damn it. Dr. Stone fans, I'll see y'all in season four. However, if I can cap it off just like this, Dr. Stone has been one of those shows where I started on YouTube was able to have repeated season on YouTube, unlike other shows that they're able to continue like that, they went on like this. But my list of shows that do this is not actually that long. Yes, I just showed you Golden Conway, and this also shows like Overlord that I need to print for, and that's entering to presumably last season and going on four or five seasons. And my, my many, of you, many of you may not be YouTubers, when you think about covering shows for as long as you have as your link on YouTube, Dr. Stone, three seasons going on a fourth, that is a lot of time invested. Damn. If that's not something to think about and or appreciate you tripping. If I can make one more comparison to Golden Cowboy, Dr. Stone, I appreciate you for being one of my favorite shows when you dropped, every time you dropped, throughout my career on this site. So, if we got one more round, let's get it done. Y'all watch this video, leave me a comment, let me know what you think. Like this video for me, and I'll see y'all. Peace out, subscribe to the Spin Booth. Mm -hmm.